Ostia Antica, 30 kilometers southwest of Rome, was ancient Rome's major seaport. The clearly discernible ruins of restaurants, bakeries, shops, houses, and public meeting places gives a good impression of what life must once have looked like in the 50,000 strong town. Ancient Romans buried their dead outside the city walls. Founded in the 4th century BC, Ostia thrived until the 5th century AD when the threat of barbarian invasions led to its abandonment. The barbarians never actually entered Ostia and the Tiber River slowly filled the city with silt until it was almost completely buried. Once inside the Roman gate, we visited the Baths of Neptune. Here is a beautifully preserved mosaic of the sea god Neptune riding a chariot drawn by four horses. It wasn't until the 1800s that Ostia was rediscovered. Then, under Mussolini, massive excavations were undertaken from 1938 to 1942. One important facility shared by all was the communal latrine. Each building had at least one for its tenants. Ostia's amphitheater was built in 12 BC and held 3,500 spectators. The tiny stage is still intact and there was permanent scenery that rose three stories behind the stage. Behind the theater is the Forum of the Corporations, the offices of 64 maritime companies. In front of each shop, were mosaics of the goods that each merchant traded. Once you completed your business at the Forum, you would then offer a sacrifice on the altar at the Temple of Ceres.
Ostia is the best preserved ancient Roman city in the world, even better preserved than Pompeii. Because Ostia was abandoned so quickly, there was no time to even remove the millstones from the bakery. The millstones functioned by first pouring grain into the top of the grinder. Poles were then inserted and the grinding head was slowly rotated until flour poured out the bottom. We stop for a bite to eat in the cafeteria. Here are some of the storage vessels for the grains that were used to provide bread for all of Rome. Ostia, current day archaeologists are protecting and preserving, under modern tin roofs, marble plaques which once identified important buildings throughout the city. Through the trees, you can catch a glimpse of the Tiber River which had buried the city for more than a millennium. Unknown to many modern people, Ostia and other Roman cities had complex systems of hot and cold running water. Through this iron door, you can see a collection of lead piping that was used to transport water to the kitchens and baths of Ostia. This is the Grand Temple, also called the Capitolium, named after the original atop Capitol Hill in Rome. It was dedicated to the pagan trinity of Jupiter, Juno, and Minerva. During the Middle Ages, this building was all that was visible in Ostia. The marble veneer was scavenged in the Middle Ages, leaving only the core brickwork. Here we discovered the remnants of the first Christian church in Ostia. Right next door was a shop where marble columns were made. Its owners appear to have abandoned these columns when the city was evacuated.
not far from the harbor, we found this magnificent three-story building with long corridors extending in all directions. When we went upstairs, we discovered we were in a vast neighborhood of apartments and ancient condos. On the wall in one of these corridors, we found two beautiful paintings. Many of the dwellings opened onto fancy open-air courtyards. Here we discovered a small neighborhood public bath. This building was used as a grocery store, complete with marble counters and tiled floors. In front of this sculpture, I noticed something white poking out of the ground. What I picked up was a seashell from approximately 500 AD, no doubt deposited there when the Tiber River had buried the city.
the last picture we took was this close-up of a marble facade. Note the graffiti dating back to 1952 and another dated 1851.